Hey, what's going on guys? It is Chuck here. And today in this Firebot tutorial, we are going to be going and creating a smarter way for handling our Twitch events. When we get a follow, when we get a sub, instead of having separate alerts for each one of those types of events, we're gonna consolidate all of our alerts into a single preset effect list. This is gonna make your alerts easier to manage. And when you wanna make changes down the road, you only have to make changes in one place and all of your events, such as follows and subs and raids, will all be updated at the same time. So this is great for those of you who haven't moved over to Firebot yet to handle your alerts. Maybe you're still using like a Streamlabs or Stream Elements or something like that to handle these types of alerts. This is a really nice way to manage them within Firebot. And for those of you that are already deep in the Firebot rabbit hole, maybe you're not even using preset effect lists like this today. Hopefully I'm gonna show you something new. With that said, let's jump into Firebot. All right, so I am on my preset effect list tab here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new preset effect list. I'm actually gonna call this alerts. The reason for this is it's not just a single type of alert this is gonna handle. This is gonna handle all of the alerts that we want it to. Not just follows, but also subs, raids, gifted subs, you name it, this can handle it. Now we need to add a couple of arguments here, and this is gonna give us our first ability to leverage those new quality of life updates that are available in Firebot 5.61. Now the first argument we're gonna add is something that I'm gonna call alert type. Now this is how we're gonna indicate the type of alert that this is. Is it a follow? Is it a raid? The reason we're gonna do this is because in my setup, I actually changed the sound effect based on the type of event it is. So follows sound different than a subscription, for example. If you don't have a dynamic sound and you just have the same alert sound for everything, you can actually skip this alert type argument here. We're gonna hit save. We need to add two more. The other one is what we're gonna call alert text. Now this is the text that's going to appear on the screen during the event. It's gonna say so-and-so just followed, so-and-so just subscribed. That's the text we're gonna pass into this argument. And lastly is our chat. If you don't want this to chat in chat uh, when something happens, uh, you can also skip the alert chat argument here. Uh, but for today's tutorial, we are going to have all three. So I'm gonna hit save. And we're gonna start by creating our first effect. Now this first effect is going to be a play video effect. So we're gonna grab our play video. And I have a local video that I use uh, for my alerts. This is something that I created in After Effects. I've got my alert video here picked out. If I hit play here, we can see what that looks like as it builds in. There we go, and it'll build out. So I'm not gonna add a, uh, a duration here. I want it to go for as long as the video is going to run. My video also doesn't have any sound, so I'm not gonna adjust the volume here. As far as the display location, because I set up all of my alerts in a full 1920 by 1080 p uh, browser source, I leave my video perfectly centered here. There will be some things that I'm gonna tweak the positioning on, um, but when I want to put my alerts in different places, I move the whole browser source around scene by scene in, in OBS. So let's add our dimensions here just to verify that this is going to be uh, 1920 by 1080. And I do like adding these animations to my videos. It adds a little bit of extra oomph to them and I think it makes it a little bit more fun. So I'm gonna flip in X when it builds in and then I'm going to, instead of fade out, I'm going to light speed exit out. For me, these are both pretty fun and I like the way that they look. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. You can also choose none if you don't want any of these types of animations. All right, with that said, let's hit add. Now, I like to add labels to my things in Firebot. It makes it easier when I need to understand what I'm looking at, uh, what it is I'm looking at. So for here, when it comes to videos or sound files, what I like to do is put the name of uh, the video here. So this is my long version of the uh, alert pop-up. I have a shorter version that I use when I'm rated. Um, if you wanna see a video tutorial about how I handle raid event changes, uh, let me know and I'm happy to build that uh, video out as well. Next, we're gonna go and add our chat effect. And this is when we're going to say in chat, so-and-so just followed. And this is the first time we get to take advantage of those new shorthand 
preset effect list names. So traditionally you would go into vars here and you would type preset list arg and then you'd give it your name. And the name we gave it earlier was uh, alert chat, but there's a better way to do this. And that is just dollar sign, pound sign, and then the name alert chat. There we go. Much easier. Again, this is a really nice quality of life change that was added in Firebot 5.61. So let's hit add. And we're, again, we're gonna add a label here and the label that we're gonna add here is alert chat message. Next, we're gonna add a sound effect. So it's a long story, but my sound effects are not stored locally. Um, I ran into some problems with Google Drive a few years ago. So the way that this works for me is that my sounds are actually stored uh, <laughs> on my website. So I'm going to enter a URL for mine. The big difference here though, is that we're gonna use that alert type argument here. So when I pass in that alert type name, what I'm really passing is the file name of the sound that I want to use. So you could do this locally if you wanted to set your local file path. If you have just one sound effect, you can skip this process and just pick the one sound you want. But for us, we're going to have this set up this way. We're gonna set the volume to eight and then we're going to hit add. And I'm gonna call this my alert sound. Next, we're gonna to start to handle the text on the screen. But in order to do that, we need to add some delays. And these delays are purely timed for my videos and my alerts. Your mileage will vary based on the video you're using, how long you want it to take to build in and things like that. But my delay here uh, to start is gonna be half a second. So I'm gonna add half a second delay. So 0 0.5, hit save. And again, I love adding labels. So we're just going to make it very easy. I don't have to click into it to understand how long that is going to take me. I will be able to just look at the label and know how long that delay effect is. We're now going to add our show text uh, effect. This is how we're gonna get the alert text to display on the screen. And you, know, you can type whatever you want here. I mean, we could just type, uh, text like this and it can just show up exactly how we want. But I actually have a block of code that I've already done to format this the way I want. It's gonna pick a font that I've installed into Firebot. If you want to learn more about how to do that, I will put a link below the like button that will go over how to install custom fonts into Firebot. It makes doing this type of thing way easier. And on top of that, you'll see under the fonts, uh, well, not in the code editor, but here you'll see all of your custom installed fonts listed here. So it makes it much easier to handle and create uh, nice looking text and use the fonts you want to use. With this, I do need to make some adjustments. Now these settings are specifically for my text and my alert boxes. Uh, this will again, will change based on uh, your specific videos and text that you want on your screen. This takes a lot of trial and error, at least it does for me. So one thing I recommend is using a debug border on the text. This adds a red pixel outline around your text, makes it easier to figure out where it is on the screen. When you test it, you'll be able to see where it's going to be. As we continue down, I have a fade in duration. Again, this is specific to me. You will pick what you want here. Um, but I fade in, I fade out at one second, and the duration of this is going to be three seconds on the screen. Now, I'm building this in the context of a 1920 by 1080 uh, scene, because in OBS, again, I'm gonna be changing the positioning and scaling of the browser source of my Firebot overlay. Uh, based on the OBS scene I'm in. So when I'm in my chat lobby, it will look different than, and be positioned differently than when I'm in, say, a game. We'll hit add here. We're going to add our label. And again, I like to keep these labels simple. Uh, we're gonna call this our alert text label. And lastly is our final delay. Now this delay, what I like about this is it helps us with our cues. You don't have to add a delay at the end here. You can use the Firebot queue system a little bit differently if you'd like. Um, you would be able to set up uh, all sorts of different queue types, but effectively do sequential. You can do interval uh, or custom. Um, 
for us in my real setup, this would be a custom queue. Um, and we're going to add a nine seconds to the label here. So that way we know that it's a nine second delay. Perfect. Okay. So this is our preset effect list set up. Let's hit save. Now let's go and create our event. And the very first event we're going to be creating is a follow event. So let's go over to the events tab and we're going to create a new event here. Now this is going to trigger whenever someone follows us. So let's click follow and we're going to add a new effect. So the effect we're going to be looking for is run effect list. And you'll see we have our run effect list and it defaults to a custom effect list type. We're going to switch this to preset. From the drop down, we're going to pick alerts. And you'll see that we have our alert types here. So, or our preset list arguments here. So, we have our alert type. The very first one that we're going to be doing is follows. So, let's do follow. This is what the name of my sound effect file is. Under the alert text, this is where we get to say, on the screen who followed us. So let's do dollar sign user. This is the user who followed uh, is now following. And then the alert chat message. Thank you. Following and we're going to at men message uh, at mention them. So with this, we'll hit add and we will add a label here. And the label I like to do for this is alert hand. because effectively we have our preset effect list that is going to be handling all of the alerts regardless of the event type here. Let's simulate, shall we? So we're gonna simulate a follow event. So we're gonna go down to follow. We're gonna type in Firebot. And I recommend you check this force event to run checkbox. There are built-in protections to Firebot that will prevent, say, a follow, unfollow, refollow from triggering your follow event multiple times. Uh, checking this will bypass those rules and those built-in safeguards. Uh, which makes it easier to test, especially if you're testing back to back. So let's hit simulate here. And there we go. Firebot is now following. There we go. There is our follow event. Now we're going to duplicate it and we're going to move this to a sub alert. So we're going to change our trigger to sub. This is going to be a Twitch sub. So when someone individually subs on their own and we're going to update our values here. So uh, instead of alert type of follow, we're going to call this sub. Instead of user is now following, uh, we're going to update this to subscribed and update this from thank you for following. Thank you for subscribing at user. Uh, they've been subbed or dollar sign sub months. And if we hover over the vars, it'll start to disappear so we can read what's behind it. But now you'll see that we have, they've been subbed for X number of months. So you'll see, you saw how easy that was. Let's hit save. We'll hit save. And let's simulate a subscription here. So we're going to go down to sub again, the Twitch sub. We're going to force it to run. This is going to be for Firebot. We're going to say it is a resub. Uh, we'll select tier one. We'll say for 12 months, we'll say a 12 month streak and we will hit simulate. There's our message on screen. And now if we go to the chat here, we'll see, thank you for subscribing Firebot. They've been subbed for 12 months and we have our following alert as well. Now we can go through and we can create a new alert for every type of event in Firebot. And instead of having to manage this event by event, we have our single preset effect list where if we needed to go in and make changes to this. So let's say we wanted to change the font color. Well, easy peasy, we go in here and we can change our font color uh, to some other color. And we're just going to go off on a limb here and say, there we go, something random. We'll hit save, save, and let's test this out. So if we go to follow here, and if we run this, there we go, now it's purple. And if we want to test this a little bit differently with the sub, we can now hit play here and same thing, purple text everywhere. We did not have to change each of these. So that's how you're able to use these preset effect lists to simplify your alert setup in Firebot and make it much more manageable. So as you go through your streaming career and you want to make changes and you want to add new assets, you don't have to redo this for every single alert type.
You change it in one place and all of your alerts and all of your effects will just update as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask them down below. I will be responding to questions. If you liked the video or found it helpful, please give a thumbs up or a like and subscribe if you want to see new videos. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out, stay classy, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!